Hello, everyone. This is Joseph Katz. I am here again with Kettlespace co-founder, Dan Rosenzweig. Dan, what's going on today? The holidays are upon us. A very exciting time of year. It is an exciting time of year. Looking forward to some time off and R&R and &R just hanging out. Uh, we've had some great conversations about the hub and spoke model and the third space and what that means and how that applies to companies who are looking for real estate for their companies in the New York area or beyond. And today I thought we would just dive into a idea that comes up when we talk about our space as underutilized space. What does that mean to the average consumer of real estate and how does that apply in our models? Well, great question. So I think it really varies of who, uh, who the audience is. Um, beauty tends to be in the eye of the beholder. Um, but from an underutilized um, standpoint, uh, we look at, we're somewhat asset agnostic, right? So a room is a room. Um, you know, the main difference between retail and office is retail tends to be at the ground level and get a higher rent per square foot than office, which is upstairs. Um, and, you know, same is true. That, you know, there are some differences from a zoning standpoint, but anything underutilized is, um, is space that isn't um, necessarily being physically occupied and therefore creating any value for either an end user or for the owner. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it, it varies across asset type, but, but our favorite underutilized assets tend to be um, hotels, um, which their peak times are early in the morning, late at night. Um, restaurants, their peak times tend to be late at night. Um, event spaces, which tend to um, be more occupied during uh, the weekends than, than during the week, or if they are occupied um, later in the evenings. Um, Multifamily residential spaces also have um, considered like amenity floors and all types of beautiful spaces that, that are just not necessarily used as much as they could. Um, so there's an opportunity to create one as an owner, a, a new revenue stream and to like tap into what we would argue is latent demand for folks in your, in your vicinity. And then as a user, um, find access to all these beautiful premium spaces that are around you, but you just didn't have access to it at, uh, you know, on a prior date. Given, the, given everything that's going on in the world today, I imagine that a lot of the office buildings uh, are now have vacant spaces and more underutilized space. Would that be a fair statement? Yeah, so it, it really depends. Um, you know, uh, office leases tend to span several years. So um, there tends to be a call it a nine to 18 month lag in what happens on a macro uh, standpoint and then how it actually affects the market. Um, I think you're going to start to see more of an impact into, you know, starting now-ish into next year. Um, but there certainly has been a lot of activity on the sublease market, which, um, which is, uh, you know, creates revenue opportunities for existing tenants. Um, so we've been contacted by several to try and create revenue for, um, you know, I'm a company and I used to have a hundred employees who came into the office every day. Uh, now during COVID and after, because of our model has shifted a little bit, um, we, we only need a, a half to a quarter as much of the space. And I'm still stuck paying rent for the full amount. So what we can do is help create revenue opportunities on that existing 50% um, if they're so inclined. So um, it really varies. You know, uh, we tend to like spaces that are um, built out already um, to create a an easier, less expensive, um, you know, revenue opportunity. But we're certainly open to consider floors that you, you know, are, are demoed um, or, uh, you know, down to the studs, as you might say. So, you know, you talk about restaurants, hotels, event spaces, that implies that those spaces are all, you know, semi-public, not private. Uh, in our inventory of space, I imagine, and, I, you know, I know, <laughs> a little bit of a loaded question, that we have space that is private and available for use uh, as either dedicated space or private space. Um, so you can talk a little bit about that. Happy to. So um, coming back to like rooms are rooms, right? Um, there are some spaces like uh, call it a hotel lobby that um, unless you had a really big company wouldn't necessarily make sense to be fully private, right? Um, but there are conference rooms or there are, um, you know, private dining rooms and restaurants like wine cellars and uh, all sorts of uh, high tech, beautiful rooms in, in all of these assets, right? Hotels have hotel rooms themselves that lend themselves really nicely to private space, right? Uh, and private meaning that you're paying a little extra, but getting exclusive access to it, right? So 
um, in my view, whether it's a conference room, it could be a conference room one day. And if someone wants to take that for, a, you know, make it their own and, and sign for a month or a year, well, you know, what have you, that becomes an office, right? Yeah. So it's really, the, you know, uh, as Shakespeare said, like, what's in a name? Like, the only delta between a conference room is like what you want it to be versus an office. Um, it's really just about the utility created. Right. Right. How it's so, used. Um, you know, we try and be as flexible as we can and, and give each room its own opportunity to really be what it wants. Uh, and, and same for the end user, letting them choose the, uh, you know, the rooms and, and uh, access the spaces of their dreams. So if a company and a team would like private space, we can offer it. We can provide that. We have to a bunch. Them. Come talk to us. We have yeah. um, currently we're working with the Rogers Hotel, the Mondrian Hotel, the Standard Hotel. Um, all have uh, small rooms that are good for teams of you know one to four, and then big rooms that are good for teams of like call it twenty to fifty. So um, you name it, we've got it. Just come talk to us, and on a um, on a you know on a per desk basis, which is like how co working likes to talk, or on a per square foot basis, which is how real estate generally likes to talk, you're going to save somewhere between 25 and 50% by partnering with us. Right. Um, and that, so, and those, um, would make, those would make great spokes because they're centrally located to groups. For sure. A hundred percent. Right. So we are very, very flexible uh, in our view. And our goal is to create agility, right. Or the ability to change directions for our clients so that if things change over time, right, they can be in and out of a space as quickly as they need to. Awesome. Um, I'm sure each person, each company is going to have their unique set of requirements and that you could work with them to find out and find a place that makes the most sense for them. So I'll let them get in touch with you. Of course, we'll but, take a data-driven approach. And our goal is going to be really to understand what your goals are, what space, not just why space, but like, what's the point? What's the outcome? Are you trying to retain talent? Um, are you trying to um, increase revenue? Are you trying to do both? Uh, are you trying to cut down commute times, be eco-friendly, right? We can help you do all of the above and more. So um, if you're interested, please give me a call. Excellent, Dan. Appreciate you taking a few minutes today to talk about this topic. Uh, wishing you and the family happy holidays and all the best. And uh, we'll speak again soon. In the new year. Have a great one, everyone. Speak to you soon. Bye, guys.